It's good that we've had Catch-22 in the south end of Liverpool being given some funding off a £5 million kitty that's being distributed around the country. It's good that Catch-22, as I've just been saying, this organisation in the south end of Liverpool have been given the funds to pay attention to the grooming of young men and young women into gangs and drug dealing and whatever and what forth. But not only that, the aftercare. So that's what that's what Catch-22 are going to be doing with this funding. They're going to be addressing the grooming situation. They're going to be trying to prevent it. They're going to look at the individuals that are caught up in it. They're going to give them different options, give them different avenues, give them different choices, which is probably employment and a path away from prison. That's got to be the outcome for these kids, a path away from prison. So it's good, but there's not enough centres like them. You've got some powerful centres. You've got kind charity in the south end of Liverpool. You've got that catch-22. And there's loads of others that I could speak about right now. But they're all based around the funding that they receive from anywhere. Whether it's the government or whether it's community grants or the public funding these places. More of them need to be reopened. More of them need to be reopened smack bang in the middle of these communities that have got a high rate of crime, high rate of antisocial behaviour, and there's been fatalities through gun crime and gun murders. Community centres need to be smack bang right in the middle of these communities, not a mile over there or four miles over there. They need to be placed right in the middle. You're spending hundreds of millions on tarmac. You send them pure billions to Ukraine. The amount of drug dealers that have been arrested, convicted and, and placed in prison and then gone through the taxation process with the government where all their proceeds over a decade have been taken off them. I believe the city receives 10% of that illegal gotten gains by the drug dealers. What are you doing with it? Yeah, you give some to the Anthony Walker Foundation. Fantastic. You give them so much money and they're going to use it for a positive outcome and that's been great. But when you consider the amount of criminals, especially organised crime groups and drug dealers that have been arrested since that law came in where they give the proceeds of crime back to the community where the, where the people are convicted, I'm not seeing nothing. All I'm seeing is big expensive police stations, big expensive cars, big expensive... Whatever. I'm not seeing no state-of-the-art community centres smack bang in the middle of Anfield. I'm not seeing no state-of-the-art community centres smack bang on the John Estate. I'm not seeing nothing like that. But the amount of money usually recuperating off the homegrown drug dealers in the city of Liverpool, money laundering offences, all these proceeds of crime that use have been confiscating for well over a decade I firmly believe that the city of Liverpool and the people and them communities have only seen about 10% of them proceeds. Where is the rest? And why isn't the rest of it being put to good use in the communities that were damaged by the individuals the proceeds were taken off? That's what should be happening. If you think I'm wrong, you're not listening to me straight. You're not understanding where I'm coming from. But it's a valid point. They must, have, they must have took billions in proceeds of crime from the city of Liverpool. And that's no exaggerating. They must have confiscated billions of pounds worth of assets in the last 15 years through proceeds of crimes. Where has it gone? When the law was brought in over a decade that the, that the proceeds of crime bill, or whatever you want to call it, the majority of the proceeds that was taken would be put back into the communities where them individuals were from and destroying. But it is what it is. I can be a loud mouth about it. I can scream at the top of my voice like I have for half a decade, get it twisted, six years. Been screaming it, identifying it. 
raising awareness for what's coming, trying to get you to open your eyes to what's going on upon our streets with these individuals that are becoming iconic by the generations. Trust me, it's poison. It's going to destroy us from within. If you've got any decency within your heart, if you've got any morals within your mind and within your soul, you'll understand where the f I'm coming from. If you're not blind and you're walking around your town centre or up your street, down your community, and you're seeing what the folks is doing, you need to relate to what I'm saying. We've had this pandemic to do with knife crime. And it's not really the drug dealers that's responsible for the knife crime. There's loads of situations that's involved, that's impacting upon young people feeling scared and having to carry knives to protect themselves. And the main issue in my eyes is the stop and search laws at the moment that are abysmal. They're full of sh and they're not working. It's as simple as that. And that's just one percentage of what's going on with knife crime. But I'm going to start focusing on everything I've always focused on, but I'm going to start putting my mad narrative towards gun crime. Because gun crime is one of the biggest, if not the most important threat to our communities right now. Because once you get a fatality from this family and this family, it's long-lasting violence. It's long-lasting turf wars. It's long-lasting trauma. It's long-lasting victims. And the general public will never, ever get to feel safe upon their communities where they once did. Women out there who thought the world of this individual cashman start thinking about what's what and where's what and what can you do to help this family get the justice they deserve. Put your love aside. Put all your bullshit aside. It is what it is. Your real bird, his real girlfriend, has been on the side, his boyfriend. All he is that have had him round over the last year participated in anything, know anything about him, know any gaff where the firearms may be, know his little safe haven when shit went down, he used to go and base himself there and chill for a week. We all had them. He will have had one. Where is he? Someone knows. It's normally with a little bird. He hasn't gone there alone. He will have took a little bird with him. Who is that bird? Who's the bird he's been spending most nights with? Can she, will she have information? Is the sudden hidden in her house? Is the sudden hidden in her nana's house? Is it in the garden of the nana's house? We just don't know if that information could be vital. It's important that you share it. There's numbers that are anonymous. There's numbers that you can ring and you will not be exposed to anyone that can harm you or come at you indiscriminately. You understand? It's vital that this family now get the justice for the murder of their young child. I'm doing my part by making you all aware, raising awareness consistently. I'm not doing it to offend. I'm not doing it to get any sort of status off it. I'm simply doing what I've done for the past six years on dozens and dozens of different unsolved murders within the city of Liverpool. I don't want to sit here and sound like a parrot repeating myself, getting more intense, getting more passionate, feeling the butterflies kicking in. My mind's starting to become more pessimistic. It's going like into a tunnel vision. And once I start getting into them areas and I start speaking, I just start rolling with it. And I don't really want to start offending no one. So I've learned not to burn your tongue. It can get you hung. So it's good to pull it back. I've said what I need to say. I think I was the first one to, you know, share the names on social platforms. There's other platforms out there that did participate and did raise awareness and good on news for doing so. Use other platforms out there that just kept your mouth shut, never really engaged with it. It's messy. It's disgusting. You need to question yourselves. I don't know why scousers are still listening to you. It just shows what's what and what is it all about, who you're connected with. Mm -hmm. I'm made up. I sacrificed all these little weird rats, all them criminal networks, that criminal fraternity. Honest to God, 
Obviously, you go through your loneliness, you go through them patches of boredom where you always could be enticed to get back in. You're always going to have one of them individuals from that life getting on you. Don't you want to jump on board? Like, da, 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 da. Just stand strong. Stand strong. Avoid them like the plague and eventually you'll get through it. And once you get through it, you feel free. You feel fantastic. You're not surrounded by dickheads. You're not getting phone calls or messages off knobheads. You're just on your own little path trying to establish yourself in this frequency that you find yourself in, bro. Me, being out for six years, being trying my best to get on with my life, but I'm very passionate about the, uh, the message, choose a life, not a life. I'm too passionate to turn me back on it, even though it is destroying my personal life consistently. I've just put too much effort in it. I've got too much faith in it. It's stuck by me through times of loneliness. It's the only thing that's kept me going, and there's no way I'm going to start turning me back on it now. That's why Cal Cook is very, very, very powerful. Whether they hate it or not. So I want to go, basically. But I don't because it's early. It's Monday night. There's like over 800 people in here, people. If you can hit the likes. If you haven't subscribed and you're just in here watching, subscribe. Once you've subscribed for a certain amount of days, you can join the conversation. You can then become a member. If you become a member, your comments and your questions get highlighted and I can speak to you straight away. Probably have members dropping questions there, but I've been focused on what I've been delivering to you. Godson saying who's a member, great streamer, great, bro. I'm not here trying to impress no one. I'm just being myself. I'm learning. I want to get better on how I deliver my speeches. I want to get better. I'm base me work upon more information that's factual, more confirmation instead of information. And that's what I'm trying to do. With every live feed, I'm trying to correct myself. I'm, start, I'm trying to remain calm. I'm taking me time to deliver answers to the questions. I'm thinking about them a little bit more. And when I, when I behave like that and when I work like that, I'm more relatable. People can relate to me a lot more. The numbers on my live feed go up. When I'm being, you know, uncontrollable, unstable, letting my emotions run wild, start being very passionate and aggressive and screaming about these rats that's destroying our city. Although it's very great, although it's, people can feel the passion, it's not relatable to a lot of people and they just turn away from me. So it's in the interest of the message that I start conducting myself in a more professional manner on these screens, especially when I'm starting to get numbers on my live feed like this. To other people, 800 isn't a lot. 800 people's not a lot. You might be on here because of the, the subjects I'm speaking about now with to do with the Corbell murder and the Gale murder and Sam's murder or whatever. But if you go over my content now you're here and you go and look at most of my live feeds, go and look at most of my content, it will give you a good idea of who I am. You're going to see loads of platforms out there that are nothing to do with me, but they use and abuse my content for financial gains and for personal indirect targeting towards myself. I'm here. You know, I've had individuals around me who I believed I could trust. For some reason, these individuals were getting contacted by people that wanted interviews with me. Because I'm not speaking to them people, them people are turning around to these news organisations, television companies, and saying to them, that Darren doesn't want to engage with us. We've asked him and he's saying no. So then they go back to these companies and say, he doesn't want to participate with us. Well, really, if they would have just come to me and asked me direct on numerous platforms, I would have said, yeah, because it's in my own interest to say yeah and get on them platforms to let the message go more wider, to let it spread further. A lot more people hear about the story. A lot more people hear about the adversity. A lot more people hear about the power of the message and what's got me through and what I can get others through if they embrace it. It's all right, me screaming, choose a life, not a knife, UK. 
but you've got to take it on board, have a little look at it, look at me, because I'm the message, basically. You're looking around, you're looking for advertisements and all these organisations and groups and websites and CIC codes and all, all this, looking for where's the message. I'm the message. Me sitting in front of you now, preaching like this, is the message. Not many people understand it. That's why the message not dead. That's why it continues. It continues, it will always continue because it's not orchestrated. I've repeated this in the past. It's not an orchestrated message. It's natural. It's come from an organic process. It's happened in a time of trauma and depression, and desperation. That's where this message has come from. It's not a group of individuals that some are corrupt, some are ex-convicts that are still mix with criminals sitting in a room in Liverpool Council's buildings and orchestrating a message and then coming out with a logo and then coming out with a shout and manipulating the youth to try and follow a message that the people that are preaching the message have got no real experience and they talk. On the other hand, you've got one of the most powerful messages in the United Kingdom. Don't get it twisted, people. I'm not being big-headed, but the, the fact is... I've got one of the most powerful messages that come from the streets in the city of Liverpool that thousands are listening to, loads are being inspired by, loads are being motivated by, parents are being made aware of certain things that they can identify with to make sure the kids are not at risk. But they're not embracing it. They can see when they're doing assemblies with other knife messages and the kids in the assemblies are going, what about choosing a life, not a knife, Darren G? You can see the impact it's having right through the schools. When I first started this message years ago, six or seven years, no, it's six years ago, I'll say. When I first started this message, you should have seen the schools up and down Liverpool. I had a thing called rush the bush, rush to the bush. Right? <laughs> Years ago, we used to have all these little mag life mulberry bushes and you could run and bounce off them and bounce back off them. So I just done this video called Rush to the Bush and it just went viral around the schools, right? And all the kids are rushing into bushes, but they're diving in at first. And it was just going right around the schools. It was powerful. And then rats tried to cancel me out. And it just... But the point I'm trying to make is Cal McCook is powerful. It's had its purpose. It's still got a purpose. And it will continue to deliver for that purpose. It's a message. It's where's the wisdom. There's a story behind it. You know, if you want to embrace it, if it can encourage you and inspire you to light that fire with inside you and continue on a life of good morals, good attitude, decent conduct, you know, approach your life differently. Avoid them groups of negativity that poisonous circle, just get away from it. Deal with your loneliness, start getting on that lonely path of life. You come in by yourself, you're gonna leave by yourself. When you come in, you're gonna get them helping hands. The nurses help you into here, your mother helps you along the way. And then as you're growing up and going through that, you're gonna be old hands with a few people and you don't really understand it. When it's time to go, you're then again gonna have hands helping you pass through hands watching you go away right through it all you're by yourself you're going to have helping hands some are going to be deceitful some are going to want to manipulate you and some are going to cause physical and psychological harm to you some will want to make you feel loved some will want to have care for you and help you elevate and help you progress and survive in this world which is dangerous that's all your choice what hands you hold, what hands you don't hold, is all your choice. At the beginning of life, it's out of your hands, it's someone else's. At the end of your life, it's out of your hands, it's someone else's. Right through your life, it's all in your hands. How you conduct yourself, how you behave, how you feel. Are you full of poison, are you full of hate? Have you been doing devious and nasty little things most of your life? Time to change. Move away from that circle. Stay away from them people that are encouraging you to take substances like cocaine, 
Stay away from that group that's encouraging you to drink more and more wine. Now spirits, leaving you a mess, leaving you vulnerable to them prying, grooming, nasty little drug dealers that deal cocaine and ketamine. Obviously, if you want to engage with me in any way, please engage with me directly. Don't engage with other individuals that may have an ulterior motive to tell you that I don't want to engage. I'm open to discussions in the prevention of guns and knife crime to the youth. It's all about protecting the youth, not there to earn financially on the back of it.